Hey, welcome to Vice Grip Garage. This is day one of Rocky Mountain Race Week. We're kicking it off, Great Bend, Kansas. We've got El Toro, the Turbo Coyote Swap Mustang. It's gonna be a lot of fun. pretty big I'm sorry it's okay. thank you though <laughs> first thing we got to do is get through tech there's a big line there's 250 cars here we're gonna get everything put together they're gonna check the trailer as well trailer lights I think things like that and uh, we'll go over the staging lanes get through tech racing doesn't start for another I don't know five six seven hours but that's all right it'll give us time to walk around look at some cars there's some really cool stuff here it's gonna be a lot of fun we got Andy's GTO and El Toro unloaded. This is gonna be my ride for the week. You guys probably remember this. I just got my license in this a couple weeks ago. And we got a trailer set up on it. John's my partner. How's it going? How we doing? Good. You got everything figured out here, huh? So John's been working hard on this. You've made some more improvements since we ran it last, right? So he moved the parachute handle for a guy. So now we're down here instead of up here on the roof. The guy's head was hitting it. So that's going to be nice and handy. He's got the dash back in it for us. You know, the comfort stuff. So that's good. So John just gave me a tour of the car here. He added some electrical digitals because it's got to be street legal, an it's actual street, legal. street car. You want to show us all the buttons here? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Got high beams and low beams over look, here. Look at that. Which one's which? I don't know. <laughs> They're both dim. <laughs> we got a horn. Ooh. We got our turn signals. We had to on the opposite switch side. that to the other side. So it's up left it's, or is up right? It's still up left or one or the other, one way or the other. What makes sense? Yeah. Then we got our hazards here. Oh of course. Yeah. So you hang them out of the dash. Just Keep it cool in there. What's the thing in the middle? Which one? This? This is our radios. We got the headphones so oh. we can talk to each other and listen to music. Nice. So we got some blue teeth whaling we can do. We've got a fire extinguisher that won't put anything out. That won't do much. It'll save your legs as you get out. But nice. So she's ready. We've got trailer trailer lights even. Them are here and then you just tuck them back in, you know, when you're not using on them. So that even works. This doesn't have a plate, but we're not worrying about that. The fun part is going to be when we get pulled over, explaining that I'm from Minnesota. He's from Iowa. We're borrowing this car. We don't know anything about it. And see if we cannot get it impounded, basically. This is the goal. <laughs> I don't really care about the ticket. It's just... How am I getting home? You know, that's going to be the big thing. But I've been in this position before, driving rakes home, so it's really no different. Just borrowing it, you know? Been watching Doug put sparkulators in for 38 hours and uh, shining the thing. What a beautiful machine. How many plugs you got in here? 16 or something? 16 plugs. 16 switches. Man. Saying all those things a show car. Well, we're waiting in the tech line that appears to be 78 metric miles long. And John's got his laptop and he's going to try to bleep bloop some stuff in the computer box because we're going to try to get all 12 of them and do something. And I think we're gonna get through here and then eat some hot dogs or something, probably. And uh, that's all I've got so far, look at that. We just made her through track tech and NHRA tech. Car is officially official for the thing now, so that's good. 
Got the little trailer off. John's throwing the chute back on. We've got three or four hours before we run yet, but just getting this stuff out of the way. Not a lot of room, so we're just bringing some basic tools. Earl, jack, jack stand, stuff like that. Some pads. We got these big Cooper Cabras. We're gonna run them down the road. They're a little tight in there, so we might have to put some spring spacers in or something because they're rubbing, especially with the additional weight. And now we'll be throwing our bags and everything behind there. But we'll make it work, we'll figure it out. We can also, there's some adjustments where we can get this up a little bit higher as well. Uh, Doug, Andy, James, Cletus, they're all over there. We're probably gonna swing over in a minute. There are so many cool cars here. We did, we did add a light in here because we're gonna need to see at night for, I don't know, atlases or whatever you do. So we got this guy up here now and boy, does that work. Tell you what, it's probably gonna come flying off and hit me in the teeth in the first pass, but it's in there. And then this has been reinforced with the mount. That should work just fine. So yeah, I think we're all set as far as traveling. We just gotta get this first pass done today and go from there. We entered in the limited street class. We could have been in the Rowdy Radios, which is 26 and smaller, I believe. They're running eighth mile, but some pretty big heavy heaters out here. Not that I wanna win necessarily. First time, just gotta get to the end. And then next time, you know, we can start figuring out how to go fast, I guess. So we jumped into the limited street class, which is an 850 class. So the goal in the car is to basically run as close to 850 as possible without going over. Uh, and then at the end of race week, they're gonna average all those together and the fastest ET at the end wins. We're gonna be happy with anything in the eights. We're just not sure that we wanna take the risk with anything with that there coyote going wrong. So we run an 899.9 packing up, hitting the road. But of course, we'll start turning it up over the week, trying to figure out how to get close to that 850 mark. The car is definitely capable. It's just how bad do we want to beat on it, you know? Look at this thing, it's called the gap train. I like it. Did you ever play Pogs? Pogs? Yes. yes. Some of the true street cars are running right now, which is like 14, 13, 12. One that 11, and I guess like eight, then nine or something. Anyway, it's not ours. Hot rod gassers, and then we'll be up. Andy and I. These guys are getting ready. George is icing her down. And uh, Parker just ran a little bit ago. So today is not a drive day. Today is racing only, and then tomorrow we've got to drive from Great Bend all the way to Pueblo. Colorado. I think that's like 300 or maybe more than 300 miles. So it's a full day of driving tomorrow. A lot of people need to get caught up on sleep and stuff like that anyway. So it's actually kind of a blessing, but we just want to get one good run down here, pack up, get back to the motel, get some rest, check over the cars. And then we're going to leave early in the morning as the plan. So if you remember, he just built this car and they barely made it in time for tech. It's here. And Tom's gonna run it down, shake it down, make sure everything's in good shape. And then the rest of the week, he's gonna be driving it. They thrashed on this car. Huge respect getting this thing put together in time. Buddy, You're just checking tire pressure, made sure we had CO2, that's for the boost controller. Looked everything over. We think we're probably gonna pull the chute just so we can repack it, just in case we need it later in the week, but there's a pretty good shutdown here, so. A lot of room out there. Probably won't necessarily need it for braking, and who knows, it might just fall out and just drag, so. Uh, but I think we're all set. We're just waiting. There was some sort of oil down or something. We were next and kind of scrambling, but now we have a couple minutes to just hang out. 
I don't know, maybe eat some more pizza or something. I might as well have another slice. So. Well, we're up in the staging lane here. I think there's, uh, I don't know, there's cars in front of me. Five, maybe seven, probably four. Uh, a lot of people having issues hooking up, it sounds like. So we nixed the plan of starting off at five, turn the boost controller down to three. We're just going to try to do an A to B pass and just see where we land. If we blow the tires off, we're going to have to run again anyway. So we'll just try this, see what it runs. And then if we have to, we'll come out and turn it up. But maybe we can still run a 880. I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see, I guess. So there on the top end of the track, it got a little bumpy, and I for sure felt the tire rubbing. I mean, you could feel it kind of lunging and pulling. And I'm not sure if I let out of it or not. I can't remember, to be honest. But it felt like I just had a foot through the firewall and the ears pinned back. But we definitely lost some speed. It should have been about 159, 160 probably done. Maybe about 151. We got out and looked. This fender's already kind of rolled up in here. And on, didn't rub. yeah, that side didn't rub, but we came over to this side, and you can see around the tire pretty well all the way around it. It was rubbing, so when I was hitting those bumps, this was making contact. So, what we're doing is we're jamming this board in here, and then we're taking the jack handle, jam it in, and we're rolling this out as much as I can. Now, we had to do that anyway because uh, John said when he was driving with the uh, Cooper Cobras it was rubbing, right? Yeah, rubbed a little bit with the bigger tires. Yeah, with these. So we kind of had to do it anyway. So we're going to try to get this done, make a little room in there, turn up the boost controller, and try to make a hit again at some point. Plus, the track's going to cool, cool down a little bit. So, yeah, that, that's going to help us. And I got to figure out what to do with this. I don't know. There's a whole lot of stuff in this front seat. It's kind of like when you pull a sleeping bag out of the bag you're never going to get it back in so i don't know john and i will struggle on that for a while but all in all that was my first eight quarter mile a lot of fun thanks again to motion raceworks for letting me do this uh really cool of them so really cool car to do it in too coyote swapped terpsky mustang hmm, who would have thought Well, we ended up using a five pound Tanya Harding and I got it rolled up real nice now. And decided to do this side too real quick since we had everything out. Now we've got some not so good E85 in there right now. You can just smell it, and feel it, and taste it. And it's full, unfortunately. We can only fit about a gallon in. I brought some X85, which Independent Chevelle runs. So what we're gonna do, because we can't pump it out, we don't have any containers. 
to just pump it out. We're gonna do the right thing and just go cruise around town on slicks, I guess, huh? And uh, use up some of that fuel. And then we'll cut some of the 685 and try to get some better fuel in there. And that'll also waste a little bit of time. And we get back, hopefully we could just go right up and make another hit and turn in a better slip today. We were on four. We're gonna go to two and six down there on the haul tech and it's gonna be quite a bit more rowdy. So we'll see if we can get closer to that 850 mark. So we're running behind, it's like 1030 right now. So they just called everyone that wanted to run a second pass at the same time. So it kind of turned into a madhouse. There's fresh track prep. So we got pretty close to the front. Uh, I think Cletus is gonna try to run James, Ruby versus Mullet, and then we'll be kind of right around in there as well. Hopefully we can rip off a good hit here and then we got a lot of packing to do because again, tomorrow's the drive day, so we gotta get the trailer ready and everything else. pits now this goes way way back over here you can see everyone's converting their cars to street driving I went and grabbed some stuff from the other camp John's already throwing the Cooper coppers on are they gonna clear coppers are on that's Look at that. really tight Woo. boy we're gonna have to suck it in a little bit <laughs> it's gonna be tight maybe we'll load the trailer a little heavy on the rear enders but now we have to fit all of our backpacks and bags and cold snacks and gear and equipment into the car back here and that little trailer there and that's pretty much it chute comes off trailer hitch goes on but all in all a good day car didn't get hurt we didn't have to really do any repairs which is great i shouldn't even say that we got a lot of information on the boost controller now seven seems like a decent number so next race will be completely different though in Pueblo then is it Pueblo or, or Pueblo? Pueblo? Pueblo Colorado? Like by the who look how good this light works I'm gonna start running them in all my older rigs well we got the old girl all loaded up you know expertly and it's I mean, we're really tight quarters in here. Got the trailer on. That's looking pretty good. However, we went about seven feet and discovered that weighted these tires, even with it rolled, it's highly unlikely that that's gonna work. So we're gonna back the shocks off. And unfortunately, Andy's gotta take some spring spacers out of his and we're gonna try to put those in El Toro. Well, it is 1 a.m. We're officially loaded, re-rolled the fenders again. Yeah. Took one inch spacers from Andy's GT0, we'll put them in this one. 
relax the shocks all the way to zero, didn't we? Now we have like a quarter inch of clearance. Seems to be working good so far. Oh, by the way, Doug's really expensive bike just flew off onto the highway, so we're pulled over fixing that. It's about 5.45 million early, 9 o'clock in the morning. Getting ready to leave. Hey, El Toro is not stolen. That's a start. It's looking good. It must have rained last night. Maybe, probably not. Uh, the guys are going to be down here pretty soon. We're going to hit the road. Just got to do the regular maintenance. Check the oils and stuff. Yep, 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 yep. Well, that's done. We got 300 some miles. That's as the crow flies. No, it's not. That's not right. What I'm trying to say is, if you go on the line and map it, it's 300 some miles. But we have to go a very specific route and there's checkpoints that you have to go to and take a picture of yourself in the car at the checkpoint to prove that you went off the trail so to speak which is kind of cool we're going to get to see some back roads and some stuff like that so i think it ends up being like 320 miles hopefully an uneventful day just get some nice views in and stuff like that but you never know something could happen or something could break i really hope not it's going to be too hot Radio deals. Ooh, look at this stuff. We can That's pretty cool. Talk to everybody in the other cars, I guess. Somehow they interwave and you can. They've got them, and well, I guess everybody has them. Cleeter and James, Andy, Doug, you name it. And there's buttons in the car already. You just click on them, kind of like a CB radio. But the best part is, we don't know how to do it, but it's got Bluetooth. So we can get some whaling going and some other stuff. That's probably a skosh better than 80 million RPM drone <laughs> for an entire day, but we'll have to try to figure that out yet. some Tom Petty playing just you know feeling good about stuff remember that fuel pump that sounded like a trumpet band going off yeah it just it's done it gave up and the good news is the fuel pump we need is in a completely different vehicle going an entirely different route so that's fine so we're out here just you know I don't even know where we're at. We made it like 28 miles though, so that's good. There's only 300 more. We're gonna take this one out and wait for this other pump to arrive. We got chocolate donuts though, so we're good. You gonna send it in them trees? <laughs> it's where it belongs, right? <laughs> you can't see it, but there's a uh, recycling container below his feet down there. <laughs> OSHA approved. <laughs> We're going to take the filter out too since we got 48 hours to wait. <laughs> and just clean this up, make sure there's nothing in here. And uh, recycling that real quick. It made some aggressive noises. Yeah. When your fuel pump goes, what's up? Metal. 
that's the shell. Aluminium is that guy. Yeah, because you can see it in the top of here. I think there was some breakdown in there. There is one can that has got, half left. I got two in mine. Do you like SpaghettiOs with or without hot dogs? I'm more of a meatball guy, but I like it with hot dogs. It's now about 9 a.m. and uh, we're back on the road doing the thing. another four miles that's good we got a oh yeah we do got to blow it out huh. I think them stringy things are supposed to be on the inside yeah we decided to get an axis holding the inside of the wheel how fast were you going 100 about 110 yeah yeah you'll get that sometimes like, shoot did you check the air on that this morning uh yeah, yeah. There, you go. there you go uh yep that's gonna come off yep I don't know if the new one will go on, but it's going to come on. <laughs> one of the huge advantages of running E85 is it keeps the car significantly cooler, which is why I changed Independent Chevelle to E85. We've been cutting El Toro with some pump gas, 91 and 93. We're down to like 45% ethanol. Yeah, the engine temperatures have gone up pretty significantly, about 20 degrees. So we're running 195, 200. So what we're going to continue to do is cut the E85 that we have in with the pump gas. We were gonna run straight pump gas, but then we'll be running too hot. We'll end up with an empty jug. When we get to the track, we'll pump the fuel cell into the empty jug, fill it with the X85, run that on the track. When we're done with that, we'll pump that back into the pail and so on, but kind of a pain, but that way the car stays cool down the highway. And we actually found a station here with E85, so we're topping off the cans that we can. Roadrunner. Mm -hmm. I like it. All right, John. We got some stickers we to put on. We got some stickers to put on now. Have to go with the country girl. <laughs> That's Space, just mandatory. Is definitely key on that. It's put put one on the rust, <laughs> and then maybe one on the good side. There's a good side to this car. Well, this every is side. every car has a Craigslist side, John. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John. Don't mess this up. We got one shot. Oh yeah. Oh wait a second, we need a knife now or something, don't we? No, we peel, peel it off. Peel it off. Peel and stick. Oh. I don't know how this science Brother. works. He's gotta get the plastic off of it. Should we just keep buying these every stop and just line them up? <laughs> I don't know why we waited so long to do this, really. Well, we made it to the checkpoint, which is this building here. It's like petrified wood thing. So everyone has to come here and take a picture in their car in front of that building to prove that they went along the route. And of course, we stopped, so I went across the street to O'Reilly's grab some stickers so we're gonna throw some stickers on here get our picture and get back on the road because it is getting hot
La Junta. La, 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 la Jane, La Junta, La Janta, somewhere. No, oh, maybe it's Perkins, I don't know. Anyway, race car stuff. These all have really high stall converters, so you're pulling trailers, going down the highway. Transmission temps, they get up there, you know, so we're just pulled over, eased off for a second, let these cool down a little bit, grab a cold snack out of the cooler. I think a guy and some other fellers only got, I don't know, 50, 60 miles, but look at this thing. I don't know what it is, but I want it. This is from the other night when Doug's hood flew off. Dang, that's too bad. This car is legitimately a show car. And the hood came off and landed on the highway. I just swerved around it and barely missed it. But we made it to our motel. The only issue today is the fuel pump in El Toro. And the GT0 is getting a little bit hot. El Toro got to about 207, 208 on the water, but you know, I fed her the coal and she came back down to 190s. It just likes to run. So we're gonna find some parking spots, unhook the trailers, and start prepping for tomorrow because now we have quite a bit to do in this car. That's gonna be a bracket apparently to hold that thing straight. The tire rub on the internet. On the interwebs? Yeah, something about uh John, let me see your hacksaw. Pretty good. We got to do some turbo pipage clearance stuff on El Toro over there in the diamond section. We took Doug's spot. Well, that's going to do it for day one and two. Be sure to stay tuned because coming up next, we're going to turn it up in Pablo, Colorado. We got to, you know, get closer to that 850. Thanks, guys, for watching. Appreciate it very much. We'll see you next time.